Behold, truly one of the most love-hate relationships I've ever had in my entire life. Now I'll start off by saying, this is the Gibson Darkfire. It's a robot guitar. If you've watched any of my episodes on robot tunes, I'm not a fan. It's kind of like, you know, the guy in the bathroom that like wants to help you wash your hands. Bro, this is one of the things I can do on my own. I don't need your help. I don't need a robot tuning things for me. But in 2009, one of my buddies had sent me a Darkfire limited edition first run. And I probably used that guitar when I was actually playing shows, 80 shows. It was amazing. It, it played great, it sounded great. It, as you can see, it looks awesome. It has the L5 flower pot uh, inlay on the headstock. It's got this black ebony fretboard, totally comfortable and rad satin back with these see-through black um, plates. It actually has a black see-through pick guard, but you know, like a man, I threw that right back in the case because I don't want that covering up this beautiful, beautiful dark red wood. In fact, it sort of reminds me of an early predecessor to the Blood Moon. You know, you got the black, you got the black acrylic versus like the black carbon fiber thing going on. I used it for 80 gigs on the 81st. Now mind you, I wasn't bringing a backup guitar because the thing that's awesome about this guitar is you can pull out this master control knob right down here and just strum it and it's in tune. So I'm in front of a crowd, I'm rocking out, I go to tune my guitar, and all of a sudden, one of these tuning heads just starts turning completely the wrong direction. I'm like, what? So I will say that when it works, that this guitar, it made me so happy. It was such a great guitar, but when it doesn't work, when you're in front of three, 400 people and your guitar tuner's turning backwards and you literally have to ask the guitarist and the band after you, can you borrow their guitar when you have this beautiful Gibson there because you can't just manually tune this back when the thing's going wild? That sucks. This guitar was ahead of its time. It still is ahead of its time. It's, there's, there's way too much going on in this guitar. But there's basically three different color banks in here that you can go to all these different tunings. I mean, literally every drop tuning, slide tuning, Delta Blues tuning. It's kind of amazing. In fact, if you want to learn how to play on different tunings, well, how much easier is it to go like this? And I press, it says G, so I'm assuming it's some sort of G tuning. And tuning that is, but it's cool. Now I want to go back to normal tuning. Pull that out. Look at that, guys. It's already going wonky on me. I'm gonna push it back in. Pull it back out. Now, one really cool thing about this guitar is that's the the piezo or piezo in fact i asked my buddy steve the other day he said both both are correct i don't know but that's an actual that's a that's a piezo pickup right at this bridge which by the way the volume is this is the toggle switch this went back and forth 16 times so eight times both ways to gibson my early one before Gibson finally said, do you want another guitar? And I was like, yes, because I kept getting it fixed under warranty. And I kept thinking to my, and they told me there was only one guy in the entire plant that knew how to fix these guitars. What happens when that guy quits or dies? Does no one know how to fix this thing? Well, there's a company called Tronicle out in Germany and they still have the new old stock and maybe even some new parts for these guitars. But Gibson, if you send this back to Gibson and say, fix this for me, they're gonna say, no, sorry, I don't recognize this number. Click. You can't buy the battery for this anymore. They don't make it. The only thing you could do on Tronicle, if you go to Tronicle, is get a more generic battery that is now available. It comes with a back plate that the battery attaches to and apparently, you have to move some of like the PC boards and stuff in here, which by the way, this is crammed the f full. 
So I don't know how the hell you'd even do that. And then if you want to charge the guitar, you have to take the battery out by unscrewing this and then charge the battery, put it back in. No. The connector to connect these things. It's just a little three pronger, but it's like this weird size. It's like 0.2 millimeters different than every other battery on the freaking planet. So you can't just buy a lithium ion battery and then just plug it in and then charge it, which you're supposed to charge this into a box. It's a stereo box. So you can send the, the, the piezo out to one amp and the magnetic pickups out to another amp. Really cool idea. And then it actually charges the guitar. Wow. You can't get that battery anymore. Not accepting that as an answer. I went online. I found an RC car battery on Amazon. Two of them for $27. Not like the $150 workaround kit. $27. I get it. Thinking all excited it has the three prong thing on the Amazon picture. It looks like it's going to work. Oh no, half a millimeter too big. What am I supposed to do? So I call up Steve, my guy. I said, Steve, can you put this crappy little small head from the other old Tronicle battery that came with this and put it on this RC car battery. Yeah, Benny, I think I can do that. Now, mind you, I had stripped off the heads of these after I charged it and I started like shocking the shit out of myself. This is above my pay grade. Maybe when there's sparks and fire and it smells like sulfur, you should stop. And Steve said, you know what? Instead of even trying to put this head on, why don't I just jump these cables? Cause he's a much smarter person than me. On. New strings. Perfectly intonated. And it really, really, really tunes well. I'm not sure Gibson knows who they're dealing with because they made a guitar that you have to be like an astrophysicist. So maybe Brian May. Maybe Brian May from Queen who helps all the badgers and hedgehogs and uh, knows how to do 3D uh, photography and can, you know, read the stars. Like that guy, that guy should have a dark fire because he knows how to use it. This has chameleon tones in it. Like, so the chameleon tones are supposed to be a 10 band graphic EQ for the P90 and this burst bucker one so that you can make it sound like a Fender, you can make it sound like an L5. It has all these different things. And I've messed with it before. I'm not gonna get into it now because it's just way over my head. This guitar hasn't been played since 2009. I didn't do anything to it other than string it up and have Steve fix it. Like actually put the battery in, it's perfect. So it's clear in 2009, Gibson was making really, really high quality stuff to pair with these silly robot tuners. And bear in mind that these are generation one robot tuners. So as I found the newer ones, and I have a robot guitar in the mail, a, uh, the, the, the bluey silvery one, that one's in the mail. So we're gonna do a review of that one. Those, you can pull out the tuner and then tune it normally. These only go one direction. And if you wanna tune them manually, you have to like really kinda push it. So right now, it's on the piezo pickup. bad. Now this lead pickup is the Gibson Burst Bucker. I had Burst Bucker 2s in one of my Gibson signatures and they sounded dead. Now I've been playing this for a while and I certainly don't love it as much as the 57. It doesn't have quite the output that I want on it, but it's a good sounding pickup. Very quacky, very quacky. Um, I like it, not love, but the way that this guitar plays, the satin of the neck, 
the kind of 50, in between 50s, 60s profile thing it got going on. Like, I cannot tell you how much I just love digging into this guitar. I mean, it sounds good, and I gotta tell you that this P90 right here. Sounds pretty good, man. Let's go detune it. So I can go to this little D right here. Gibson really put a, a lot of work into this guitar and it's a shame that it's so confusing and it's a shame that it's so strange and that, you know, it's not very reliable, but man, they put the Mir Space Station on quite an amazing Les Paul and I guess I have to invite it back into my heart. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already?